Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I am your host and resident oceanographer, Jim Massa. Well, as you can see here, Arctic methane deposits are starting to release, scientists say. So an expedition to uh, off the East Siberian coast, uh, specifically the Laptev Sea, has uh, some interesting findings. And here is a photo of that very research vessel in the Laptev Sea. Scientists say they have found evidence of frozen methane deposits in the Arctic Ocean have started to be released over a large area of the continental slope off the East Siberian coast. High levels of the potent greenhouse gas have been detected down to a depth of 350 meters in the Laptev Sea, which is off Russia, prompting concern among researchers the discovery could have serious climate consequences. Let me pause there for a moment and explain the significance of that 350 meters. Since 1971, the oceans have absorbed 93% of greenhouse gas emissions by human activity. 93%. The estimates are more than 200 zettajoules of heat energy. And this heat energy has been detected down to 2,000 meters, but the upper 500 meters is where we see the greatest concentration. This is now leading to a concern that the oceans could be permanently uh, stratifying. I discussed with you the implications, serious implications, that, that that poses in a separate video. So let's, let's think about this. If the air is warming, the atmosphere is warming, which it is, and that warming is causing the permafrost to thaw and therefore release the methane, then it stands to reason, it's logical to reason, that the warming water could be doing something similar to the substrate on the slopes there where you start warming the substrate and with the clathrates and the hydrates that are present, you start releasing, you start melting, thawing, they start releasing the methane. I did an earlier video from Igor's uh, cruise, another cruise that he did, showing this methane, uh, being active videos of methane coming to the surface. The slope sediments in the Arctic contain a huge quantity of frozen uh, methane, other gases known as hydrates. Methane has a warming effect 80 times stronger than carbon dioxide over 20 years. But keep in mind, it doesn't disappear after 20 years. The methane oxidizes into carbon dioxide. So the warming effect continues. It still lingers. And the U.S. Geological Survey has listed Arctic hydrate destabilization as one of four most serious scenarios for abrupt climate change. Now, there are estimates, for example, that the East Siberian Sea has about 14 gigatons of methane frozen. When you consider all the methane in the permafrost, the estimates that scientists such as Igor Smelotov, who is the, uh, the chief scientist on this report I'm sharing with you, they're trying to estimate here, then it stands to reason that there it could be a potential for a huge amount of methane, many, many, many gigatons that could be released, which of course will be very, uh, cause very serious uh, issues with the warming temperatures, climate change, etc. So uh, the research vessel is the academic Keldish and said most of the bubbles were currently dissolving into the water, uh, in the water, but methane levels at the surface were four to eight times what would normally be expected. And this was being vented into the atmosphere. It's venting into the atmosphere. So at depth, you have greater pressure. Greater pressure keeps the gases in solution. At the surface, where the pressure is reduced, no, it's not going to be kept into uh, in solution. It's going to come out. Of, it's going to be released in the gaseous state, and that's what basically is being described there. So, you know, think for example, like the hydrothermal vents. You have those hot plumes of water there. The water's coming out at like, you know, four to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's liquid because of the immense pressure. It, ke it keeps it liquid, keeps everything, you know, in solution. So at this moment, there's unlikely to be any major impact on global warming, but the point is the process has been triggered. 
The East Siberian Slope Methane Hydrate System has been perturbed and the process will be ongoing, said Swedish scientist Orjan Gustafsson of Stockholm University, who is a member of this research team. Methane seeps detected. You know, no, so they're, they're saying the findings were preliminary. They're saying that because they are measuring it. And then from there, they want to try and estimate the volume. And then from there, you can then make a statement once you put into the computer models as to what the implications are. That's why it's preliminary. They're doing the measurements now. But the ex expedition believes that these are new based on earlier studies showing movement of the subsea uh, permafrost. Basically slumping, maybe, some, maybe the gases were, uh, you know, the hydrates were thawing, releasing the gases, which can cause movement of the substrate. For example, just in the, uh, the permafrost, you have blowouts. You have methane pressure building up, and you blow out the ground. You know, you got these craters. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So the scale of the methane releases will not be confirmed until they return, analyze the data, and publish, and so forth. And, of course, the destabilizing slope does raise issue about potential impact on the speed of global heating. Will the methane be released slowly or quickly? That's a, something they've been trying to get a handle on. The Arctic is considered ground zero in a debate about the vulnerability of frozen methane deposits, which have been called the sleeping giants in the carbon cycle in the ocean. And if a, a tipping point could be uh, exceeded. With Arctic temperatures now rising, well, it's actually three times, more than three times as fast as the global average, the question of when or even whether they'll be released into the atmosphere has been a matter of considerable uncertainty in climate computer models. And, you know, when you have estimates of 14 gigatons in the East Siberian Sea, and, you know, depending on the estimates, I've heard up to 100 gigatons all across the Arctic. That, if that gets released quickly, even slowly, that still has serious implications. This research seems the first to observationally confirm the methane release, and it's underway in many areas. So here's a photo of uh, you know, people at work on a sampling device, whether they're prepping to, for collection or getting ready to, down, you know, to uh, take the samples and analyze it, not sure, but there it is. Chances are if it's, you know, that the first thing they'll do is they'll probably put the samples into a gas chromatograph, which can first confirm the gas is methane and whatever, whatever, whatever other gases are present, as well as the concentration. And from there, you can do your calculations. At one location on the Laptev Sea Slope, at depth of over th about 300 meters, they found methane concentrations of up to 1,600 nanomoles per liter, which is 400 times higher than would be expected if the sea and the atmosphere were in equilibrium. In other words, the methane in the sea and the atmosphere were in equilibrium. A word about what's meant by a nanomole. Let's start with moles. If I have carbon... Carbon is atomic number six. The, the, the three forms of it, carbon 12, 13, 14, the most common is 12. You have six protons, six neutrons. The number of protons plus the number of neutrons add together is the atomic mass. If I have 12 grams of carbon, that's one mole. Take hydrogen gas, H2. Hydrogen has one proton, no neutrons, in the usual state. You put two of those atoms together to make the hydrogen gas molecule. You have H2, atomic mass 2. Well, 2 grams is one mole. Take sodium and chloride. Sodium, atomic mass, I think 23, chlorine like 35, thereabouts. So the, the atomic mass, when, you, when they combine to a molecule, is 58. 58 grams is one mole. As it turns out, whether I have one mole of H2 gas, one mole of carbon, one mole of NaCl, sodium chloride, they have the same number of atoms, molecules, what have you. And that is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So if I take that 58 grams of sodium chloride and I dissolve it in one liter of water, 
I have a one molar solution or one mole per liter. If I took 116 grams of sodium chloride, dissolved it in one liter, I have a two molar solution. 29 grams one into one liter, I have a 0 0.5 molar solution. I think you get the idea what's meant by moles. So Igor Smeltov, oh, oh, my good friend there, said the Russian, uh, who's of the Russian Academy of Sciences, he's the chief scientist, said that the discharges were significantly larger than anything found before. The discovery of actively releasing shelf slope hydrates is very important and unknown until now. This is a new page, potentially can have serious climate consequences, but we need more study before we can confirm that. Remember, this is preliminary. Now, one thing that has always bothered me is how Igor and Natalia Shakova have been really just excoriated for no good reason. You know, they've been called doomists and alarmists and this and the other thing. You know, it, Natalia was accused of saying there's a time bomb going off. Well, she never did say that. She said there's a potential. You know, saying there's a potential is perfectly, le you know, legitimate thing to say. And they're saying there's potential because of what their findings are indicating. So their concern is that, yeah, there's a potential that, and they're probably likely, the evidence is showing that there is a great amount of methane that can be potentially released over a, sh you know, a matter of decades, which is geologically a short period of time. So they're trying to warn us of what could be coming down the pipe. I call that good science. The most likely cause is the instability is an intrusion of warm Atlantic currents into the East Arctic. This Atlantification is driven by human-induced climate disruption. I did a video segment some time ago called the Atlantification of the Barents Sea. What is meant by that is, if you look at the characteristics of the Arctic Ocean, cold water temperatures, salinity, uh, of all the major oceans on the planet, it's got the lowest salinity, a lot of fresh water input, you know, snow, ice, that kind of stuff. And then if you look at the Atlantic, the Atlantic has, a, has actually, uh, the, aside from the Mediterranean Sea, has uh, like the highest salinity levels. And of course, it's warmer. So now what's happening with the intrusion of the Atlantic is a, the, the mixing is increasing such that the Arctic water are getting warmer and more saline. That's what's meant by the Atlantification. That is enough mixing now to change the characteristics of the Arctic Ocean. Before, it didn't used to happen. It, you know, you know, the way the currents were and so on, it wasn't much mixing. Now we're seeing this is all changing. In fact, now we see an intrusion of this uh, uh, warm Atlantic water underneath various halo clines in the Arctic Ocean. And from there, the heat diffuses upwards, which helps melt the sea ice earlier in the year. So this latest discovery potentially marks a third source of methane emissions from the region. Smellotov has been studying this area for two decades. As previously reported, the gas uh, is being released from the shelf of the Arctic, the biggest of any sea. Second year in a row, his team has found crater-like pockmarks in the shallower parts of the Laptev and East Siberian seas that are discharging bubble jets of methane, reaching the sea surface at levels tens to hundreds of times higher than normal. This is similar to the craters and sinkholes from Siberia. The Siberian tundra, which are basically blowing out. And we're not talking like a meter across. It's not like 10 meters across or even more. Just blowing out because of all the buildup of methane that just, boom, explodes and it's now in the atmosphere. Temperatures in Siberia are 5C higher than average from January to June. An anomaly that was made six times more time, 600 times more likely by human-caused emission of CO2 and methane. Last winter's sea ice melted unusually early. We're talking like February, March of 2020. This winter's freeze has yet to begin. This is the end of October and there's no sea ice in the lab tev. Pretty crazy stuff. So, um, I said I want to keep you up to date on what Igor has been up to. You know, I showed you that earlier video of, of, from his expedition with the with actual footage of the methane coming to the surface.
take that and then start multiplying across the whole of the Arctic Ocean Basin, and you can see that we have the potential for very serious uh, situation for the potential for rapidly further increasing temperatures. Far more than 3C that the IPCC keeps uh, touting. Anyway, thank you for your time. We'll talk soon. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.